All right, we're in Leaper's Fork, right? We're in Leaper's Fork. I mean... The village is, you know, almost a mile up here in front of us. So what is Leaper's Fork? It's in Williamson County. Is it Franklin? What can you tell us? So it's in Franklin. It's like a village. Okay. Uh, it'd be like if you're referring to Grassland or um, Bethesda. So it's different... Bethesda actually has a zip code, doesn't it? No, it doesn't. So yeah, same kind of thing. It's just a little, like a, an area with a name. It's not, it's different than a it's in unin unincorporated community though, right? Because College Grove is an unincorporated. College Grove is on the, they've got their own well, zip code, don't Well, they? they've got their own zip code. I'm thinking of uh, what would be considered an unincorporated community. What about Arrington? Arrington, that's what I'm there thinking There you go, of. so it's something yep. like that. Yeah. Yep. It's just a little area. Okay. So it's it's in Franklin, it's got a Franklin zip code. All we right. We are part of Franklin, my address says Franklin. All these little businesses here, their address is Franklin. Okay, interesting. So there is a misconception that it's this is its own city over here. Yes, so, there definitely is. Yeah. And it's a small area, right? Because Travis and I were talking earlier, and I'm going to keep going straight for a little bit. And we notice in a lot of listings, people will put that something is Leaper's Fork, or they'll refer to it, to it being close. But Leaper's Fork itself is pretty small, right? pretty small yeah it's about a I'd say and there's not a really a, a officially determined or defined area it's I'd say it's about a mile radius of the little village here what's the story with that cop car that we just passed that little old so that's thing. one of our local residents out here Aubrey Preston owns that and um, you know I've heard him talk about he sees this as a look like a little Mayberry town so that would have been you know I guess Andy Griffith's car I okay. think that's kind of the the twist on that so then we've got Fox and Lock right here. Fox and Lock, yeah. They've, so they've got some live music there on a regular basis. Some great little restaurants. It's 1892. Is this considered like downtown Leapers this Fork? This is it. So yeah. you'd call it downtown Leapers Fork, right? Well, really attached to the downtown. Yeah. Too, but that makes me think of Nashville. I know, right? No, we're a lot more quaint than that. You know, this is just a little country town. So. Well, I have trouble with Thompson Station, calling the little town like it's. It's not downtown. It's like a little town center area down by the the little train tracks and right. circa. So do you call that downtown? I don't know. I don't know what to call it. Look, everything. I'm. A, I can be awkward, so you know what I mean. Whatever's, uh, okay, yeah. whatever's the right thing, I say the wrong Just thing. Say what makes you happy, I guess, and come so, as you are. So let, let me know when we get to the edge of Leaper's Fork, and I'll turn around, but I'm just kind of... Well, I think you cruising. go down here, we can turn left on Bailey Road. That'll be a good loop. I love Bailey Road. Yeah, that's a pretty... That's a cool-looking house. Yeah, aren't these cool through here? Yeah. That one, not so much, but they'll get there. They're working on that one. Yeah. Oh, wow. So you sold a lot of land and property through this area. I didn't even really... I, intro I introduced you earlier, but... You really focus on like large farms for the most part. You do every kind of real estate. You sell homes as well, but your focus is and specialty would be like large farms and land tracks, right? Uh, yeah, I guess kind of working with people that are like minded. Yeah. You know, we share similar interests, and you saw where I live. Yeah. So this yeah. is kind of like the home turf, and I get it and I live it. What's the so, like largest? It's interesting riding with you. I, I never really got to ride through here and see stuff. You know, I'm always behind the wheel. Yeah, yeah. I just saw a new home back there. I've never noticed. That's cool. You probably take this for granted. You know how many people wish they could live over here and oh, work yeah, sure. over here. What's the largest lot or land track that you've sold? Do you remember, like, approximately, like, are we talking 50 so acres? Up here on, thousand? on Bailey Road, which is to the left. So we're kind of on the, uh, maybe, well, we're we're about on the edge of the, the south side of Leaper, the Leaper's Fork Okay, area. so there's maybe Red the, Bird. Yeah, the, right this is there. kind of the edge of the south end of it. Um, well, so I we like did this it, we, pond right here. Sorry to cut you yeah. off. Oh, yeah, no, this is a great little, an old home, and they've got a historic log cabin on that site. It's a great that little beach. Neat. Yeah. Um... Okay, so going back to the land. So yeah, we did a big project out here in uh, 2021 on Bailey Road. Okay. Um, it was, uh, let me think how big that was. S several hundred acres. Wow. Maybe close to 500. I think we, we had wow. it in multiple pieces. Maybe four, 400, something like that. Um, and you sold all of them? We sold all those, yep. You said what year? That was in 2021. 
Okay, well that was and a good time to sell. Here just recently I was working with the owner of our company, Steve Frederick, on a big one right up here on Bailey Road. It's 131 acres. Um, can you had tell a really me? Big house on that one. Okay, can you tell me what the price was on that? I'm just curious. That one closed for 14 million dollars. 14 million dollars. Yeah. That gives you. Uh, oh, he's fumbling with his phone. It's the life of the realtor there. Yeah. Well, that gives you an idea. So 14 million dollars. You got to pay up if you want some land out in this well, that area. One, now that one had a big house. That one, the land, that's not all for land. Okay. What's the draw? So, like, what's this the... is the big Bailey Road piece. It's all everything on the left, and then right after this house, then it's on both sides of the road. I mean, what's the appeal for people to with Leapers Fork? I mean, I know it's beautiful out here, but is there something more to it? Well, so really, the big the big thing is the open space. If you look on the left, you got this huge farm. This property has a conservation easement, which means it can never be developed or divided. So it is what it is. They're, they can build a house on it, but having this this view shed like this, is this is what really kind of protects the value of the land. And on the right as well, you know, you can't, there's never going to be houses here. Oh, so that's nice. I was so, going to ask you, is there really any modern neighborhood in Leaper's Fork? There's, so there, there is up in front of us here. We're going to see that. Okay. Come, come around the corner up here. Um, but it's, uh, they're large lots, you know, eight, 10, 12 acre lots. And, okay. But I think having the space is really attractive to a lot of people. There's another group of people that really are, they're drawn to maybe being around some notable people, some celebrity figures. So we do have some folks like that out here. That's right. Um, so there are people that, that like that, you know, that there's a certain allure to that, to kind of being in this popular area with all these notable figures. And I remember um, Kid Rock was kind of hanging out around here and he came to your the yeah, leapers been around for yeah. parade and yeah he's he, been around yeah. Yeah, this is beautiful i have to imagine over the years there have been developers and builders that have wanted to build out here so bad like just knock everything down and make neighborhoods look at that guy real quick uh, <laughs> he didn't even look he just waved yeah. okay that's funny yeah that's interesting Travis and I were talking earlier about just the value of land. Because I, I get asked a lot, like, hey, how much is it per acre now in Thompson Station? And I was telling Travis, I can't make a blanket statement about the value of land because it's so different. Yeah, it's pretty size specific, really. Should I go left here? Because um, I've gone right. That takes you... Let's go right and then we hook around to Carl Road. Okay, okay. That'll be, that'll be in the South Hall. That's a good drive. Yeah, that's a good drive to show you guys. This is such a beautiful view off to the right here. All of this. So yeah, the, I think the land value, you know, it's, it is pretty site specific. What can you do with it? Can you build a neighborhood? Can you build a strip mall? Can you build a Walgreens? You know? Yeah. Yeah. Or is it just a cattle, cattle field or, you know, um, can you walk around on it? Can you plant can, crops on it? You know? Yeah. That kind of stuff. For so, me, like I have a lot of people that are wanting to, buy land and of course build a house but then be able to like have a garden maybe r have their kids ride around on four wheelers maybe put a pool in have nice views have somewhere they can put a little fire pit and a nice yeah. view so it's important that it's not too steep that's a big one I mean because we get a lot of that here in well, as we're driving we've got some houses going in here on the left and you know they're large, large acres. It's not really a necessarily like a neighborhood, but you can see kind of how they're doing them. I mean, do you know what these are? These just being built by? These are just being built. I think I think they're builders building them to sell them. Okay. But I mean, but I we're talking. Know. I mean, these have got to be north of five million dollars. I would think somewhere in that that range. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. There's that one that we passed that has a lot of copper on it. I saw that on one of my little motorcycle tour rides. I think it's copper, it's beautiful. We've got a neighborhood on the right called Beechwood Plantation. Okay, so I didn't know- And then know... on the left is that the $14 million property that we closed on. Can you turn in ago. here to you Beechwood? You can, yeah, yeah. You can drive up through there. Do homes ever come up for sale in here? They do occasionally. There's not many of them though, that's the thing, so. I didn't know that this was a neighborhood. There was one for sale right up there not long ago. I just assumed that this was... Yeah, though these are nice large acre lots. Oh, 
yeah, yeah this they're bright is, in here. This is beautiful. See that to the left? Okay, everyone, I'm gonna kind of shift the camera over here to the left so everyone can see. With the barn and the fence and the grass, like, to me that is just stunning. I love that. I love even with the hill in the background like that. I mean. I noticed during the pandemic, everybody was kind of moving out of the city to get some fresh air, some open space. So we started looking, you, the new valuation model became intrinsic value. And it, well, it's not really the, the entire piece of the pie, but that's a new thing we didn't re really consider as much before. It was more about highest and best use. Now this intrinsic value, you know, being able to hike or plant crops or go do a garden or whatever, backyard chickens. There's yeah. Value, there's value in that. Being able to let the kids run around and play outside. I mean, the, it, and that is hard sometimes to put a value on. It is, yeah. It's hard to figure out. A lot of times, I just want to kind of say, well, how bad do you want it to somebody? Like, do you want to be able to have that stuff? Right. Well, it's like where you live. You know, you moved out, you got your kids out, they can run around, ride dirt bikes, play outside, you know, yeah. just go wild. When yeah. You know, if you're in a neighborhood, they don't do that, you know. Yeah, Travis here, when I was originally looking at my land, I was so nervous about it, just like everybody that's buying land. And I called Travis. I said, Travis, I need you to come look at this land. I just was so unsure of You remember it. what I told you? Yeah. I said, I'll come look at it, but you need to just go ahead and do it. Yeah. Remember? <laughs> and you did. He came out and, oh, it's raining pretty good. So I'm going to have drops all over the camera. That's okay. I'll, I'll wipe it off here in a minute. So Travis came out and he looked and he said, this is amazing. You can put the house here. You need to buy it. And... I think you thought I was crazy. <laughs> I know, I was like, okay. And now I look back, it's like the best thing that I have ever done. I mean, what a good move. I think the prices may have doubled since you bought it too. Yeah, you know, probably, that, yeah. That kind of helps, that, that right? That helps you get your brain around it for sure. Yeah. But it doesn't even feel like, like I think if you settle down on some land, like these houses in this neighborhood or wherever, your mind it changes you don't really it's cool to think about what your home's worth but you don't plan on selling right because you love it so much so it doesn't matter it brings a real sense of peace yes i really feel like i own something and it's worth staying in and i don't worry about that short-term value and being able to connect with nature is really uh really special i think it oh yeah does something to the soul yeah, I think so too. I think getting out of the hustle and bustle of the city life and yeah, yeah, that's like my move. I'll be out mowing and spend a hectic week doing a lot, and I'll pull the mower under the shade of the trees in the back of my lot where I'm facing my house, and I'll stop and I'll kind of back it up under the shade and I'll shut it off and I'll just be like, oh, this nice, is amazing. Yeah. yeah, listen to the birds. Well, I hate that it's raining out here because the shot I might look okay. I think the people will forgive us. All right, so what road are we coming so up we're coming on? Coming up to um, to Bear Creek Road. This house on the right used to be Faith Hill's house. Oh wow! A long time ago, and she looked out over this big plantation that was owned by Hank Williams Sr. back in the in the old days. Oh, okay. I think she always always had an I don't know her, but I think she probably always had an idea she wanted to own that one day. So she after she married Tim Tim McGraw, they ended up buying that. That was the McGraw farm that's been on the market for years and years. It finally sold. And the buyer of that has cut it up and they've kind of tracked it up into some different lots and stuff. So uh, that was a really big one. So that's what a lot of people are trying to do, obviously, try to buy. But they did keep that to some large acre pieces, but yeah, you can see the house that sits up there. That would have been one of the uh, the bigger houses in this area. Oh, I see. And it's got a copper yeah. roof. I remember when they put that roof on there, you could probably see it from outer space. It was so shiny. Oh yeah, and it's already but, turned yeah, black. Yeah, it's really got a nice patina on it now. It looks great. Yeah. Oh yeah, that looks beautiful out there. Yeah, that's that's a good one beautiful place it's called Beechwood Hall yeah all right 
So we've got Franklin on the left, I mean, on the left, and then Thompson Station on the right. Okay. So this we're on. This is kind of it. Kind of cuts right in through here somewhere. This is the dividing line. So if you take a left up here, we're going to go back toward Franklin. So we're about uh, probably six miles south of downtown Franklin here. On I know, right? So, what's that parade again? We were talking. I mentioned the parade. Is there a Christmas the, parade? The Reapers for Christmas parade. Okay, that's a huge parade, right? That's a good parade. Yeah. Yeah. When did that start? Has that been going on for a while? I think it's about four or five years or something like that. So it hadn't been. Is that that property well you were just telling me about? I'm that sorry. That, yeah, that's still part of. Wow, it. that is that is that a house or a barn? That's, that's a barn. A, wow, that is beautiful over there. Yeah, no, it's gorgeous. It's got a, a, sh a shake roof on it. Oh my gosh, and it's got that big pond. Yeah. Wow, that is quite the property. Is there someone living there, or on I, the property? I don't know. I'm not sure. I wasn't involved in that sale. This is Carl Road on the left. Oh yeah, let's go I down. I never got Carl to meet him. You know, kids aren't in the business stuff. But. Yeah, yeah, they don't. Look at that one's for sale. Do you know what that's listed at? I don't know what this one's listed at. And then the next one, there's a 20 acres with an old old house called the Canard House. That one's been on the market for some time now. It hadn't sold. I mean, there's some pretty. They've got some pretty steep asking prices. So huh? that Canard Springs, that that's a, a large lot neighborhood too. It's really nice. Oh yeah, yeah. I actually had some clients that really liked. Yeah, that Canard was Springs. Great. There was a home that sold in there for like three or three and a half, and they loved it. And uh, we've been waiting for another ever since. I love the canopy of trees. I know. Carl the... Road's one of my favorites. This is a great road down there. Yeah. I was telling Travis, I actually came Carl Road when I came to his house just now. And I hadn't been down this road. I don't know why. I normally go Bailey Road. And this is just such a beautiful drive. If you're coming to visit Nashville or Leapers Fork, go down Carl Road. That's neat. Feel free too to stop by Travis's house and. <laughs> <laughs> hey now, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, How long have you been a realtor? Um, I've got licensed in 2000. Oh, I think, wow. I think I think maybe 1999, but I, so you've seen you've seen it all. I have seen quite a bit. Maybe not all, but but a lot. I mean, there's been quite a few different markets since we've, we've 2000 had a few, yeah we had good bad and ugly and all that so this is great right here our area has been fortunate we've got had some good steady growth here it's been it's been good is that a house being built off to this the right this was a large a large acre piece that they cut up into some some large acre lots oh wow i wonder so if there's anything on. available in those there. are like four million dollar builds in there i wonder uh oh wow Hmm. Yeah, those are fabulous. Dang, that looks nice. So that's Baird Graham Construction does the, the did those projects in there. Oh, you know, I did see those online. Yeah, he's got a lot of really good stuff. Yeah, he does. He makes some beautiful homes. Yeah. He's this got one, another one going up on Old Hillsborough Road right now. Really? Yeah, it looks like a good one. And this on the left, this is the big one that we closed um, in 2020. The one that goes all the way to Bailey? Did it, this go to Bailey? It doesn't go all the way to Bailey. Oh, no. okay. It, it goes to, it backs up to the some of those other properties we were talking about on Bailey. Here we it's go, look at this. Acres. Yeah, but isn't this pretty through here? Oh my goodness. Look at this. I love how they planted the trees between the fence and the road like that. So the tree, how long have these, I mean, well, yeah, I was just about to say, a friend of mine lives over here on the right. And she's She was out here as a child. Her father planted all these trees. As far as I know, I think it was him. I mean, it could have been, you know. It's just crazy. Because these trees are what? At least. They're probably 40 years old. 40 years old. It's just someone 40 years ago was like, hey, let's plant these yeah. trees along don't like this. they look fabulous? They look great. Yeah. Yeah, they look awesome. That's if you own land right now. Plant trees. Plant some trees. Because it takes people... Take a lifetime to get them looking yeah, good. Yeah. That over to the left is like 
stunning. Oh, yeah, that place is amazing. Like when we talk about land value per acre, I know we can't. In you another can't thing, generalize it. No, you can't. And also, it depends on how big or how many acres you're buying. A hundred acres might be less per acre than twenty-five. Sure. Yeah, it's like buying a half a dozen eggs versus the whole dozen. You yeah. You pay a little more per egg if you get the smaller quantity, right? But like that is just stunning. A oh, lot of this, this around here, we, we kind of look at how many homes can you put on the property. That really determines a lot of the value because there's such a demand for home sites. Yeah, and yeah. That, around here, that's really driven by the septic availability. Yep. What kind of soils do we have for septic tanks and the field lines and all that stuff? Dave texting me. Oh, Super Dave the Inspector. Super Dave, probably some nonsense, some oh. meme or something. He's a great inspector. It's good yeah. to have a guy like that in the Rolodex, for sure. Yeah. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll see I you next time. I hope you have time. me back for another episode. We are. I'm going to bring Hopefully Travis back. back. That's so, going to be fun. Cool. All right. All right. See ya. Bye. Bye.